I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get ripped just uh, moving this dang thing around on this tiny little workbench here. So these sales of weird stuff presents. Back 3000 model 500, the first alpha. In a recent video on the channel, possibly even the most recent video, I teased about upcoming videos featuring this computer. Well, that time has come. This is the DEC 3000 Model 500. I have another DEC 3000, and I want to say it's a Model 300 that was in a pickups video who within the first year of the channel. So quite a while ago at, at this point, uh, two years ago. Um, I'll put a, I'll put a link to that, that video in the, in the description. I recently acquired this at an estate sale with some other, I got some other vintage Unix related stuff. I left a lot of stuff behind. There was, that person was quite a collector. It was, it was a very impressive collection of stuff. I went back on Sunday to see if there was anything left and it was, it was cleaned out out that was which made me happy because it meant that none of that stuff went to, went to e-waste which i was a little bit concerned about uh, in this video i'm gonna take this apart and look inside of it it's unlikely that i will turn it on and i will get to the reasons why as i start pulling it apart there's some things that i've noticed about it just from the outside that i i think are going to pose some problems and i'm going to need to do some Additional research, probably get some additional part. We'll get to that. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and just start tearing this thing apart and see what's inside. See what makes it tick. The size and weight of this machine have already made recording this video a challenge. Normally for a computer disassembly like this, I would have the camera usually right about here pointing down at the table, but <laughs> there's, there's not a lot of space. There is not a lot of space there. Um, so I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> um, anyway, I had misspoke earlier. The other model 3000 or the other deck 3000 that I have is a model 400. The 400 and the 500 are very similar. They have the same model of processor. Um, they have the same 512K of B, B cache, or what we would now refer to as L2 cache. Uh, the primary difference in that area is the 400 runs at 133 megahertz, and this bad boy runs at a whopping 150 megahertz. Now, take this off. Now, I had tweeted a picture of this. One of the reasons that I felt compelled to purchase this machine is there is a price sticker on here from Weird Stuff Warehouse for $274.99. And fans of the channel will surely remember that part of the name of the channel is from a mashup of Weird Stuff Warehouse. So I, I saw that and I was like, okay, I, I have to. There is no choice. <laughs> One of the things that it, it, I think is going to prevent me from turning this on. Oh my God. <laughs> Let's see if I can turn this around without throwing out my back. So I would kind of categorize this computer in the same way as uh, old world Power Max, where it's the new processor architecture, but the old bus. So the, the old world Max had the new power PC, but they kept new bus. This uses the new, the new alpha processor, previous computers from digital had used MIPS processors, but continues to, continues to use the old, uh, turbo channel, uh, expansion bus architecture. Deck would pretty quickly abandon turbo channel in favor of PCI just like Max did, uh, just like everyone did. It was, it was clearly the, the correct um, expansion bus for the future. Uh, now, this has got a pile of uh, turbo channel expansion slots, three here and three here. 
uh, and a bunch of other built-in things. Ethernet. Uh, that's labeled for printer, although it looks like one of the goofy um, digital keyboard connectors, which I have one of those keyboards. It's got an ISDN port because that is that is so useful. Um, I am not sure what this port is. This port looks to be a parallel port because it has a printer next to it. Obviously SCSI. This is the video port, and this is, I don't remember what this kind of connector is called. It is a cousin of 13W3 that a lot of other um, Unix kind of workstations, Suns and SGIs used, but it's its own thing. And I don't know if I have a cable for it. The other thing that I see missing back here is a serial port. So there wouldn't even be without a monitor and the correct cable, I don't even think that I could connect just like a serial console to it. So that's part of why I'm going to have to do some more research and figure out like what the heck can I do to get output from this thing to tell if it's if it's doing anything. Okay. And so then the other thing is I haven't looked at this closely enough to figure out there are a couple of screws around but none of them look so this looks clipped on. Figure out how to how to begin the disassembly process here. So the front panel here is clipped on, and that comes right off. Ooh, dusty. Side, and there's some screws. There's some screws around the front here. Hmm, I'm afraid. So, oh wait. Does this just like lift off? Because hmm. this doesn't seem super firmly attached, but I don't see. And it looks like the only direction that it could slide is up, but it seems pretty <clears throat> attached. It's not attached. All right, so I'm going to very carefully, carefully for my person, not for the computer. <laughs> so before I brought this down to the basement, I put it on, I put it on my bathroom scale to see how heavy it actually is. And it was 88.7 pounds. It's almost 90 freaking pounds. Okay, so this has started to... Hmm. I, I do not see how this might come apart. Wow. It's missing one of its giant metal feet. You probably, camera probably can't see that this one's missing. Uh, that's a little trap door. That's, all right, I'll get to that later. Hmm. It is not. It is not at all apparent to me what a next step would be. in this disassembly process. Cause this is not really seems like this should slide up. Oh, but it is, it is not gonna. So a caddy based CD-ROM drive and some kind of a tape drive. Now I have a number of original copies that I got at the same estate sale of actual digital Unix. So at some point, I am gonna put real digital Unix on this. I don't know, I don't know how the versions that I have, how well suited they are for an ancient alpha. Uh, on the topic, you know, still on the topic of future research. It's 
pretty rare that I come across a computer that wants to be just not taken apart. <laughs> ripped just uh moving this dang thing around on this tiny little workbench here so these were torx bits and these are regular phillips screws that doesn't seem super logical to me i guess we could take a look at the front here so the power switch possibly a Reset switch? What's on the, so on the panel? Oh, there's a little trapdoor on the panel. So I don't know what a triangle in a circle means. But that's what this, this button is. Two little LED displays, which are presumably going to show, like, postcodes. Now that's... <laughs> that's interesting. A headphone jack and a microphone jack. A line in jack, and this is labeled with a phone, so presumably this has a built in modem. Okay. I find it odd that a pedestal computer, and that is what they call this particular configuration, is the there was the desktop configuration and the pedestal configuration, would have <laughs> would have headphone and microphone. That is that is odd to me. door right here that this looks like a this looks like an IEC power connector in here and some kind of another connector and a, and a ground cable there's some kind of power so that's some kind of power routing but what I still don't see are any clips you know he a clip like like on this door here or screws or anything there's a screw back here but it's completely covered with this plastic back and this looks like oh wait, let me can... aha so that unclips that I really, really, really do not want to break any of this old, assumedly very brittle plastic. So there is a little clip here. And there's maybe one at the top. But what, that one doesn't want to come apart. All right, so then where? Okay, so let's slide in. So assumedly, if I can get this other clip down here undone without breaking it, this back piece will just come off. Aha! Yay! All right, progress. Even if just a very small amount of progress. Because <laughs> this still does not... No progress towards getting the sides off. Before I started this process, I should have looked for a service manual because there would be one <laughs> and it would have information. Now, what it says, what I overlooked is there's these metal tabs. I don't know how well, how well you can see there's these two metal tabs here. And what it says is that to remove the side panel, you pull on these metal tabs. Oh, there we go. And then there, okay. All right. We can see some stuff. So I want to set this back up. And I have to say, without that side panel, it is considerably less heavy. <laughs> so these would be the turbo channel uh, connectors for that those expansion buses. And so kind of like, like on an M bus slot or an S bus slot on a sun machine, you've got these little panels that come out, the card seats in and kind of pokes out the back. And some cards, like some of the, the 3D cards, take up multiple of these slots. And so you've got, so this one has two 
digital branded hard drives and if my recollection serves these should be one gigabyte hard drives because i think the manual says by having four of these although there's not a scuzzy connector for a fourth one here that's interesting um you can have up to four gigabytes of storage Woo! i mean in 1992 92 or 93, when this came out, four gigabytes would have been a lot. <laughs> I think at that time I had a an 80, or no, I had a half a gigabyte hard drive. Oh man, this is really... All right, so I think I need to lay this down to do this, to get enough... There we go. Oh, hello. All right. So, now we can actually see the heart of the beast. So, there's going to be the video card, video card and memory here, and the... the connector. The switch on the back, I didn't cover this, is to select between 60 hertz refresh rate or 72 hertz refresh rate, I believe. Under here is the, the CPU. Um, digital with the alphas loved the scheme where the processor has these, these like screw heads that come out of it and you literally bolt the heatsink to the processor. Something kind of annoying about this system and some of its its related systems are they use these weird... Let's see if I can get one out without uh, breaking anything. So it uses these weird 100-pin SIMs. And these SIMs are 40 bits. So they are uh, 32 bits wide and then 8 bits of... ECC, um, and these are the only computers that ever use these SIMs, and this does not have, I mean, it's only got, what, eight in there out of a total 32, so this is not very populated with memory, which is a bummer because I'll never find any more of, of <laughs> these memory modules unless I harvest them out of the other deck 3000 that I have. Um, what else is going on in here that is maybe interesting to look at? And I think that is going to be the bulk of it. I don't know what's so looking through this grate. This is going to be the power supply. Ah, so the power cable's in the back. And then there's a cable that routes around these fans. So I bet these fans down here um, run off mains voltage. Oh, and there are three big, big fans. I am sure this won't be this won't be as loud as the ES forty seven, but I I bet this is not quiet. You won't you won't be sleeping next to this. <laughs> uh, and presumably they are blowing up, which is why this pedestal is raised for for air intake here. So, power connectors back here with the switch back here somewhere. Oh no, the switch is in the front, right? Yes, the switch is in the front. Okay, so then it routes around up to here, goes into the actual power supply. Uh, and then you've got this other drive cage. I don't understand why this is attached the way that it is or quite how to get it out. I may have to I may have to go look that up also in the service manual. But this is just, I mean, this is a dense motherboard, but it's really nicely laid out. It doesn't, it doesn't look as, like as much of, I don't know, I expected it to look a lot messy. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe that's just my expectations being off, but a lot of these you know, server computers from this time period were kind of running at the edge of what was possible 
and so they tended to not look clean, right? There would be, I don't know, more mess. But this looks gorgeous inside, and it's surprisingly not very dusty in here. I mean, there's a couple little little bits of dust, but because of where that dust is, I feel like that's maybe stuff that fell in after it was taken out of service. So maybe this wasn't... So here is a little piece of paper and a little broken plastic tab. So the top doesn't really attach on. It just kind of sits there. And I wonder if this this little bro broken piece of plastic is the uh, the reason why. Okay. So this looks like it could. I don't know if I actually want to pull any of these out. If there's any. Value in that? All right. Uh, and the button on the front is not a reset button. It's a halt button to go into console mode, the manual says. So some kind of, of service mode. And I don't think I have a socket that can get... There we go. Huh. No heat sink compound? Okay, that's... Um, <laughs> I didn't expect that and I'll be, uh, I'll be, I'll be remedying that. Uh, so, deck 1991, 21064-AA, and it doesn't... I'm a little bit surprised that it doesn't list a rated clock speed on it. Um, although I know from online sources that, that, that this model runs at 150 megahertz. Uh, but I'm surprised that there's not an obvious indication on the CPU itself of what its rated speed was. I mean, I guess, I guess you weren't going down to your local CompUSA <laughs> in, um, you know, in 1991 or 92 or whenever to, oh yeah, I need a new, I need a new alpha processor. Like that was not a thing. <laughs> you bought that as part of this whole thing and you paid, you paid all the money for it. <laughs> and what a bargain too. Before I pack this back up and close, close it all up, I want to point out what I think is maybe another similarity with the previous MIPS-based architecture. So these Sims are on a riser. Let's see, what's the easy way to get? There we go. So the connector, yeah. So this beautiful riser board, MMB module, digital AACC-2. Wow. God, that looks gorgeous. It looks brand new. Has an edge connector, kind of, you know, like the pin headers that you would see on uh, on an IDE cable if it was, you know, mega wide. Now this is a memory module that I believe is from a Dexstation 5000 model 200 series. Because it is, uh, where is it on the other on the other side? It is digital branded, and and searching on some of these numbers, you know, I added up what's on here, and I think that this is a 64 megabyte module, but those systems seem to have only been able to have 32 megabyte modules, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on with that. But look at this; they have basically the same kind of edge connector, and I've not observed another computer manufacturer using that as a connector for memory. So I thought that that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, ooh, and there's, there is some, some dust collected around in here. I'll, I'll blow some of that dust out. So I'm going to bundle this back up 
And the little bit that I saw in the manual leads me to believe that this port on the back, these ports on the back that I saw, that I thought, this one in particular, that I thought was a parallel port because it's got a printer next to it, is maybe actually a serial port for a console. So maybe I can hook something up over serial to this and maybe boot it up to a console and see something. <laughs> I don't know. See if it works. See if it if it lives at all. Um, I mean, it's at least worth worth a try until I can figure out a way to get monitor hooked up. And usually, these the other um, I have another. Um, it's a much newer than this. It's a twenty one one sixty four based system. Uh, I believe that it boots up first. Stuff comes out first on serial console if it's if it's connected way before it will light up light up video and send anything out to to that console. There might be some other you know adjustment of some of these these switches on the back because there's a switch back here for that it was that this S3 switch was for selecting alternate console because supposedly this maybe also is some kind of a console connection. I don't know. This is all. This is all very new to me, so I'm just kind of, I'm kind of figuring it out as, as I go, like you do in this hobby. <laughs> all right, I'm going to put this all back together, maybe blow some things out with compressed air. Um, whew, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll turn it on and see what the heck happens. See, see how loud these three giant fans down here are. <laughs> I'm sure they've got nothing on the ES-47, but... There, yeah, they're not gonna be quiet. <laughs> sure, that's off. So I've plugged with a collection of adapters and whatnot through a USB serial adapter to my laptop here. Let's see if this, uh, see if anything good happens. Oh, you dirty dogs. <laughs> I've already been thwarted because the power connector is a reg is a quote unquote regular IEC ca ca cable, but with a notch cut out, which I believe means pulls a lot of wattage, and I or a lot of amperage. Uh, I don't know if I have one of those. I have come up with a power cable. We're not going to talk about this. Serial terminal all set up. It's Plugged in. <laughs> Don't ask about that either. Don't ask about that either. <laughs> uh, it should be good to go. This will be the first actual power on. I am, I am nervous. I am nervous about this. All right, let's see if uh, anything happens. Oh, I heard something. But there is no, I thought I heard something when I turned it on, like an additional click inside this power supply, maybe. Let me see. All right, it might've been my imagination. No light on the front panel, nothing happening. All right, it could be, let me check this power cable again. Because it is a little bit, a little bit janky. It might not be making good contact. It's plugged in over here for sure, and that's on. Hmm. All right, so unless it's not, Making adequate contact in the in the connector. Okay, all right. Well, hmm. Not sure what else to try here. I've decided to try one last thing. So before I had figured out that the power cable cable routes from back here, underneath, presumably connecting to these fans, to another connector up in the front here, and the connector up in the front here is a 
standard, for whatever that's worth, uh, IEC type connector. So I've just plugged directly into that, kind of circumventing this whole, the cable that I had here was a little bit janky. Maybe that was the problem. So I'm just trying to eliminate possible sources of problems. And this is going to be the last thing that I'll try. And then I'm going to have to go do some other research and try to figure out why this has zero signs of life. Um, so this is the first power on now for the third time. <laughs> this time for sure. But that trick never worked. This time for sure. Presto! And still no sign of life. Okay, so I am suspicious then that perhaps there's a fuse in the power supply that has faulted um, or maybe something like that. I, either way, it's more, it's more than I'm gonna try to dig into right now. Uh, I think probably what I will do before I come back to this machine is I will try to uh, power on the little brother of this machine, the model 400 that I have, uh, and see if I can get that working. They're very, very, very similar. So if I can get one working, I should be able to get the other working. Um, if anyone has any ideas of things to try, I would, I would absolutely love to hear about it. Um, if anyone has any experience using one of these computers, I, <laughs> I searched YouTube earlier today and there are two three minute videos from the same guy in Germany uh, about one of these and a short of some guy using a piece of software on, on one of these. And that is it about this computer on, on YouTube. So for what it's worth, I, I guess I've expanded the knowledge base considerably. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway. If you have enjoyed watching me flail around with this old computer, click the like button. If you'd like to see if there are ever any updates where maybe I get this thing to show some signs of life or I turn it into a museum shrine or something, <laughs> click the subscribe button. And in the meantime, try to remember the good stuff.